So today's story is how the whale got his throat. In the sea, once upon a time, oh my best beloved, there was a whale and he ate fishes. He ate the starfish and the garfish and the crab and the dab and the plice and the dace and the skate and his mate and the mackerel and the peckerel and the really truly twirly whirly eel. All the fishes he could find in all the sea he ate with his mouth. So till at last there was only one small fish left in all the sea and he was a small stud fish and he swam a little behind the whale's right ear so as to be out of harm's way. Then the whale stood up on his tail and said, I'm hungry. And the small stud fish said in a small stud voice, noble and generous, Cetacean, have you ever tasted man? No, said the whale. So what, what is it like? Nice, said the small stud fish. Nice but nubbly. Then fetch me some, said the whale and he made the sea froth up with his tail. One at a time is enough, said the stud fish. If you swim to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, that is magic. You will find sitting on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing on but a pair of blue canvas breeches. A pair of suspenders. You must not forget the suspenders. Best beloved. And a jack knife. One shipwrecked mariner who is it only fair to tell you is a man of infinite resource and sagacity. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north longitude 40 west as fast as he could swim and on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches. A pair of suspenders, you must particularly remember the suspenders, best beloved, and a jack knife he found one single, solitary shipwrecked mariner, trailing his toes in the water. He had his mummy's leave to paddle or else he would never have done it because he was a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Then the whale opened his mouth back and back and back till it nearly touched his tail and he swallowed the shipwrecked mariner and the raft he was sitting on and his blue canvas breeches and the suspenders which you must not forget and the jack knife he swallowed them all down into his warm dark inside cupboards and then he smacked his lips. So and turned round three times on his tail. But as soon as the mariner, who was a man of infinite resource and sagacity, found himself truly inside the whale's warm, dark, inside cupboards, he stumped and he jumped and he thumped and he bumped and he pranced and he danced and he banged and he clanked and he hit and he bit and he leaped and he creeped and he prowled and he howled and he hoped and he dropped and he cried and he sighed and he crawled and he bowled and he stepped and he leapt and he danced hornpipes where he shouldn't and the whale felt most unhappy indeed have you forgotten the suspenders this is a picture of the whale swallowing the mariner with his infinite resource and sagacity and the raft and the jack knife and his suspenders which you must not forget. The buttony thing are the mariner's suspenders and you can see the knife close by them. He is sitting on the raft but it has tilted up sideways so you don't see much of it. The whitey thing by the mariner's left hand is a piece of wood that he was trying to draw the raft with when the whale came along. The piece of wood is called the jaws of a gof. The mariner left it outside when he went in. The whale's name was Smiler and the mariner was called Mr. Henry Albert Bivens, AB. The little stud fish is hiding under the whale's tummy or else I would have drawn him. The reason that the sea looks so ushy squishy is because the whale is sucking it all into his mouth so as to suck in Mr. Henry Albert Bivens and the raft and the jackknife and the suspenders. You must never forget the suspenders. So he said to the stud fish, 
This man is very nubbly and besides he is making me hiccup. What shall I do? Tell him to come out, said the stuffed fish. So the whale called down his own throat to the shipwrecked mariner. Come out and behave yourself. I've got the hiccups. Nah, nah, said the mariner. Not so, but far otherwise. Take me to my natural shore and the white cliffs to Albion and I'll think about it. And he began to dance more than ever. You had better take him home, said the stud fish to the whale. I ought to have warned you that he's a man of infinite resource and sagacity. Here is the whale looking for the little stud fish who is hiding under the door sills of the equator. The little stud fish's name was Pingle. He is hiding among the roots of the big seaweed that grows in front of the doors of the equator. I have drawn the doors of the equator. They are shut. They are always kept shut because the door ought always to be kept shut. The ropey thing right across is the equator itself and the things that look like rocks are the two giant moor and core that keep the equator in order. They drew the shadow pictures on the doors of the equator and they carved all those twisted fishes under the doors. The beaky fish are called beaked dolphins and the other fish with the queer heads are called hammer-headed sharks. The whale never found the little stud fish till he got over his temper. And then they became good friends again. So the whale swam and swam and swam with both flippers and his tail as hard as, hard as he could for the hiccups. And at last he saw the mariner's natal shore and the white cliffs of Albion. And he rushed halfway up the beach and opened his mouth wide and wide and wide and said, Change here for Winchester. Ashulate, Nashua, Keel and stations on the Fitchburg Road. And just as he said, Fitch, the mariner walked out of his mouth. But while the whale had been swimming, the mariner, who was indeed a person of infinite resource and sagacity, had taken his jackknife and cut up the raft into a little square gritting all running crisscross and he had tied it firm with his suspenders. Now you know why you were not the, to forget the suspenders. And he dragged that grating wood and tied it into the whale's throat. And there it stuck. Then he recited the following shloka which as you have not heard it, I will now proceed to relate. By means of grating, I have stopped your eating. For the marina, he was also in Hibernian and he stepped out on the shingle and went home to his mother who had given him leave to trail his toes in the water and he married and lived happily ever afterward. So did the whale, but from that day on the grating in his throat, which he could neither cough up nor swallow down, prevented him eating anything except very, very small fish. And that is the reason why whales nowadays never eat men or boys or little girls. The small stud fish went and hid himself in the mud under the door sills of the equator. He was afraid that the whale might be angry with him. The sailor took the jackknife home. He was wearing the blue canvas breeches when he walked out on the shingle. The suspenders were left behind, you see, to tie the grating with and that is the end of that tale. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.